Okay, so we're back, and I just want to show you a couple of really basic things with working with these images and text uh, boxes together. So right now, uh, if I take this, take, if I take this uh, uh, picture here and I drag it on top of the text, it obscures the text. So what if I want the text to lie on top of the image? Um, well, I'm kind of out of luck. So what I have to do is I have to change their arrangement. And InDesign and a lot of vector programs work this way, that they work with what we could call kind of invisible layers. That you can have layers in your document, but you don't have to. It just automatically lays things on top of each other. It doesn't blend them together. So all we need to do is change the arrangement of these two things relative to each other. Now in Photoshop, we would do that just by moving the layers around in the stack, in the layers palette. But in InDesign, uh, you do this by going up here to Object, Arrange, bring to front, bring forward, send backwards, send to back. So you've got all these options here. Now if you forget that, aha, right click to the rescue, right click on it, on the text box, Arrange, bring to front, and now it's on top of the picture. So same thing over here, right click on the text box, Arrange, bring the front. Ah, I have this selected, that's why I didn't want. Go to the text box, right click on it, arrange, bring the front, and there we go. And ain't it grand. So now, now what? All right, let's do a few more text box tricks uh, before we move on. So, okay, we've got our basic text boxes and picture here. So let's make another text box. Go up here, click and drag. And this time I'm gonna actually place something in here from another document, from a, a, a written document. So I'm gonna go here to file, with the, make sure this is selected, we've got the cursor blinking, File, Place, just like we used for placing an image, but this time we're going to place some text. So File, Place, and let's see, I'll choose this exciting uninstalling SyncXPlus.RTF, which is rich text format document, and there it goes. So the same thing, we've got our little red box showing us that this box is not currently big enough. You'll also notice that it kept the formatting of the original document and like Warren promised there is a way to to bring it in with formatting and without formatting I just know how to bring it in with formatting at this point so that's what you get uh-huh and with this red box you can either ignore it and it just won't show the text or remember we can create another text box to link link it to and to review get the selection tool click on the red X it turns into this loaded cursor link it over here and there we go. So we've got another linked text box here. Um, okay. So, oh, just to point this out really quickly, if you overflow two text boxes, you can just link it to a third. So we've got this one is linked to this one. Uh-oh, this has a red X. So I could create another text box over here and click that. Go down here, and now it links there. Oh, still, you know, anyway, I'll just make this bigger. Okay. One last trick I'll show you is with text. If you don't have some silly document around or you don't want to deal with all this formatting, is just to use placeholder text. And so you go up here to the uh, type tool again and create the text box that you want. You know your text is going to fill this much space, but you don't have the text yet. And choose type, fill with placeholder text. And this is where you get the Greek uh, text, even though it looks more like Latin. So we could select all of this placeholder text and change the font if we wanted to. Uh, And there we go.
And you can see I'm just making it bigger to get rid of the red arrow. All right. So that's some more fun with the type tool and how to arrange uh, objects relative to each other. It also works with pictures too, just one last thing. Um, so this picture's on top of this. Uh, oh, let me also show you the rotate tool. This is the rotate tool, so if I want to rotate this picture, I click over here and rotate this around. And then if I want this to be behind this image, I just right click on it and say arrange, send to back, or send backward. And now, lo and behold, this is behind. And if I want to bring it on fr up front, Oh, let's say this is a good point. If I want to bring it in front of this picture but not in front of this text, because right now if I have it overlapped like this and I choose Arrange, Bring to Front, it overlaps that text. So let me undo that. And what I'm going to do, instead of using Bring to Front, I'm going to say Bring Forward. And it's just going to move it up one layer in the stack. And now it's on top of the picture but not on top of the uh, text. Okay.